Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Good morning friends, if you recall we were trying to find out the expression for those partial derivatives which were required to model the perturbed aerodynamic forces and moments and if you recall this was expanded as F A X by D U by U 1 to U by U 1 plus D F A X plus d alpha into alpha like this similarly this was d f a x a z by d u by u 1 to u by u 1 plus d f a z by d alpha into alpha and then q terms alpha dot terms and similarly for pitching moment we expanded it like this d m by d u by u 1 into u by u1 plus dm by d alpha into alpha plus terms with q alpha dot and delta e right we have so far completed this u derivatives the expression for u derivatives are known and we realize that if i know the aerodynamic characteristics then i will be able to find out the values of these derivatives d f a x by d u by u 1, d f a z by d u by u 1, d m by d u by u 1 and we also realize this has to be evaluated at steady state and also very importantly we should not forget we are using stability axis system. because the perturbed equation motion were simplified using stability axis system. So, it is important we again try to understand what is a stability axis system. Let us say this is the airplane and this is body axis x, y and z this is the center of gravity and there is a wing this is x y z is the body fixed axis system the alignment of x is along the fuselage reference line or some symmetric line. However, now once we talk about a stability axis system we have to understand one thing very clearly what is that let us understand this is the airplane let us say at steady state let us say this airplane is flying at a speed v is the relative air speed the airplane is going like this with angle of attack and the direction of its relative air speed so we have shown it like this. This is the condition at steady state this is important this is at steady state we define stability axis system in steady state only that is what we do we said now my x orientation will not be along any symmetric line not that fuselage reference line or a line where the product of inertia may vanish but what we are saying the x is now aligned with the direction of velocity along the direction of velocity right in the vertical plane right and this is xs and this gentleman then become zs. So, if we now try to see what exactly it means, it means this angle earlier this was alpha angle of attack at steady state that was the velocity vector angle between velocity vector and the x axis that is how we define angle of attack and when I saying that we are also assuming that x is aligned along the chord line of the wing. However, when I am defining x s like this 
then I know that there is no angle between Xs and V. That is very important. What is the implication of that? You see, if I am using X, Y, Z axis system, then there will be U and there will be W. That is, the component of V along X direction is U, component of V along Z direction is W. They are non-zero if there is a alpha 1, right? I am restricting my discussion motion in the vertical plane. Right? However, once I am taking x s, y s and z s axis system which is stability axis system, now you know that u that is the velocity along x direction is u or the v total, total velocity v in the vertical plane. Right? And there cannot be any component of the total velocity along a direction perpendicular to x s. So, along z s there will not be any component. So, we say w 1 equal to 0 and this v is the v total which is nothing but u along the stability axis system correct. So, the advantage we get is that w 1 is 0 when I am using x s y s z s. So, what is important thing is that I am defining stability axis system at steady state that is I find what is the angle at a steady state and I align the x axis along the velocity vector. So, that there is no component of total velocity along z s axis. I am simply if I am flying like this and this was my x axis and this was the velocity vector like this. So, I am just allying this x axis along the velocity vector. So, that is why w 1 becomes 0 and this orientation is done only referred to condition at steady state that is very important. Now, we are talking about perturbation. So, what do we do? We will give some perturbation and see how this diagram to be interpreted. So, we have no objection that this is alpha 1 this angle and we have there is some disturbance that has happened because of the total velocity has changed from the steady state velocity and let the component here is earlier it was u 1 at steady state and plus u is resolved along z s x s axis this is the x s axis this is this small disturbance which is perturbed alpha. Okay, clear? What is the message? This was my total velocity u because there was no jet component. Now, because of perturbation, there is a perturbed angle of attack has come and this direction is the total velocity after perturbation. So, this is perturbed angle of attack and the small u is the perturbed speed along x s direction. So, it becomes u 1 plus u and the lift or the C L and C D will be along and perpendicular to the current direction of V which is after the perturbation. Okay. So, this has to be understood and of course, along this direction this will be small w which is the component along z s axis. Please understand this w is a perturbed quantity. At steady state there was no w component along z s, but the because of perturbation the velocity vector has changed. So, there will be a w along z s direction which is a perturbed quantity. Right. Once I do that I can always use this advantage. I can write C x is equal to minus C d cos alpha plus C L sin alpha and we know that we are talking about small perturbation because this alpha is perturbed angle of attack. So, for small angle I can write C x is equal to minus C d plus C L into alpha. Remember this is small perturbation. Similarly, I can write C z is equal to minus C L cos alpha minus C d 
sine alpha, you can refer this diagram, and for a small angle, I can write this as minus Cl minus Cd alpha. So there are two equations which will be very handy, we'll be using this. So I thought before we use these equations, we again reiterate what is our understanding about stability axis and what do we mean by perturbation about steady state, right? This I presume is clear with you. Now after this u derivatives were over, we will now focus on the alpha derivative. So what we are going to do? We want to derive expression for alpha derivatives. Let me start uh, with df ax by d alpha, although we will be doing all the things. Let me write that also and dm by d alpha. Primarily these three partial derivatives will be derived in terms of aerodynamic coefficients, right. So let me start with dfx by d alpha. So let us take dfx by d alpha and the procedure is similar to what we write fax is q bar scx. So dfax by d alpha will be equal to d cx by d alpha into q bar s. But we know that we have to derive this expression dfx by d alpha at steady state. So at steady state dfax by d alpha will be dcx by d alpha to be evaluated at steady state and for q bar we write q1 s. What is this? The initially when you wrote q bar is what? q bar was half rho u1 plus u whole square plus v square plus w square. All the butter quantities are also included here. But when I write a q1, I am evaluating this at steady state which becomes q1 and steady state this is 0, this is 0, this is 0. So only it is half rho u1 square and which is equal to half rho u1 square which is equal to q1 bar 1 is for steady state condition. So we have written this as simple as that. So we need to find out what is dcx by d alpha. So what we will do, we will use this expression. What we know Cx is equal to minus Cd plus Cl into alpha. So dcx by d alpha will be minus dcd by d alpha plus alpha into dcl by d alpha plus Cl. This is clear? Now tell me. What do you want to find out? We want to find out dcx by d alpha at steady state. So how this right hand side will get modified? Before doing that, let us ask ourselves what is this alpha? Alpha is the perturbed angle of attack. So when I am evaluating at steady state, perturbed angle of attack is 0. So this gentleman goes off. So I get at steady state, this is minus dcd by d alpha plus Cl, but Cl what? Cl at steady state, so Cl1. So what do you get? The expression of dcx by d alpha as minus dcd by d alpha plus Cl1. So df ax by d alpha becomes minus q1s Or I don't take minus here, I add q1 is dcx by d alpha, so it is minus cd alpha plus cl1. This is the expression. So now we see dfax by d alpha as q1 is minus cd alpha plus cl1. So try to understand what is the meaning of cd alpha. What is C D alpha? D C D by D alpha 
what is the meaning of that? How do I find that? You recall, drag polar is given by C D equal to C D naught plus K C L square. So I can easily find out D C D by D alpha as C D naught if I assume it's constant with uh, angle of attack for small angles. This will be 2K C L into D C L by D alpha. So this will be 2K C L into C L alpha. So you could see easily that I can find out value of D C D by D alpha if I know what is the aspect ratio of the wing because K is nothing but 1 by pi aspect ratio E. If I know what C L this gentleman is cruising because these are evaluated as steady state. C L 1 will be given by C L equal to what? Lift equal to weight. So, C L equal to 2 W by rho V square S. So, C L 1 you can easily find out from this expression corresponding to the steady state corresponding to the cruise which is our steady state condition. Right? So, simple to understand this. So, once I know D F X by D alpha we will now try to find out D F A Z by D alpha. So, let us find out d f a z by d alpha again mechanically you can follow f a z equal to q s c z. So, d f a z by d alpha will be q 1 s d c z by d alpha, but we have to evaluate this at steady state. So, the Q will become Q1 and this has to be evaluated at steady state and for the steady state I am using the notation 1, which similar thing we did for d f x by d alpha also nothing new. There I wanted to have an expression of d c x by d alpha, now here d c z by d alpha. So, again we go here what is c z? c z is nothing but minus c l minus c d alpha for small angle approximation. So, you can find out d c z by d alpha with minus d c l by d alpha minus c d minus alpha into d c d by d alpha. Simple derivation, I am just taking a derivative both sides with respect to alpha. So, d c z by d alpha at steady state this becomes c l alpha minus sign at steady state minus c d 1 and this because at steady alpha equal to 0. So, this goes. So, this is minus c l alpha minus c d 1 this is d c z by d alpha. I can remove this alpha one C L alpha is C L alpha lift up slope of the whole airplane. So, once I know this then D F A Z by D alpha will look like this Q 1 S into minus C L alpha minus C D 1 and in textbook you might have seen minus is taken outside and this is written as C L alpha plus C D 1. Now, the question comes what is C D 1? C D 1 means drag coefficient C D 1, C D 1 means drag coefficient at steady state and for our case steady state is the cruise. I know that thrust equal to drag and you know drag it can be written as q 1 s c d and c d 1 will be c d naught plus k c l 1 square. So, I can easily find out c d 1 if I know drag puller of the airplane and if I know at what c l the airplane is flying which I always know from the fact that lift equal to weight gives me C L equal to 2 W rho V square S. So simple, right. So you can find out D F A Z by D alpha. What do you need to know? What is the lift up slope of the airplane? What is the C D 
at steady state, that is, what is the drag polar? And I know that from drag polar, what is the dynamic pressure at steady state? I am flying the altitude and the speed and area of the wing, as simple as that, right? So, this also we know how to do it. Now, the last part we will do dm by d alpha. Now, we will be trying to find out derivative dm by d alpha, which is very, very straightforward. You know, m I can write as q bar s c bar c m. So, dm by d alpha, which is partial derivative, will give me d c m by d alpha. And when I evaluate this at steady state, this has to be evaluated at steady state, this becomes 1. So, this will become q 1 bar s c bar c m alpha, c m alpha. And what is c m alpha of the airplane? What is c m alpha? What brings to your mind when you see c m alpha? Recall static stability when we plotted C m versus alpha, we said there is a requirement of this airplane to be statically stable about the trim that the slope should be negative. So, d C m by d alpha should be less than 0. So, this is the condition for static stability, right. So, typically this value will be negative and you know that also you cannot go on making this more and more negative because more stable means difficult to control. So, there are typical values, typical range of values a designer will select for an airplane to have adequate comfortable static stability, okay, which are known which absolutely from the configuration you can find it out. So, again I know how to calculate dm by d alpha if I know dynamic pressure area mean aerodynamic chord and the derivative C m alpha, right, which is also linked to static margin. You remember that, okay? Because roughly we remember D C m by D C L is approximately equal to minus static margin, right. So, you can easily find out D C L or D C m by D alpha using this, right, because D C m by D alpha I can write as d c m by d c l into d c l by d alpha, which is nothing but c l alpha and d c m by d c l is nothing but static margin, 10 percent static margin, 5 percent static margin, 15 percent static margin. So, all these things are known to a designer before he starts the design and is a typical number. Okay. So, we are comfortable in finding expression for alpha derivatives. In the next class, we will go for alpha dot and q and delta derivatives. Okay. Thank you very much.